All right, so what we're going to do is uh, get started on this mythical creature. And so uh, I would definitely go about, first of all, by kind of getting some references of uh, different animals that you think um, might be kind of interesting. So whether it's a, whether it's, you know, a, a, you want to do some sort of dragon, well, go find some lizards or, or alligators or crocodiles if you want to do something else. Um, find some reference, but um, it's still going to be basically like we're drawing um, anything else. We're going to start off very light and get some basic shapes down, like maybe uh, I make this kind of bear looking kind of creature. I still have to think about um, legs and feet and back legs hips and a tail or whatever I might have them looking at me so um, I'm going to start um, thinking I'll maybe it's kind of a bear a bear idea here um, but then maybe I might uh, do something else I'd come up with maybe a like a trunk of an uh, elephant since it's kind of a whimsical thing here. Um, we need this other foot underneath here. So then I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and knock some of this out here. Maybe it has more of a armadillo tail or something. It's just kind of peeking its way out in here. This one I have to do a little more structure. You can kind of see it. And this is the way I would I would start off with. It's, it's very light. You can make it a little more cartoony. And I'm just going to keep refining my drawing here. Maybe make it a little quirky mouth. I'm actually going to kind of define where the center line is of that nose so I know when to come up and when to come back down. Fuzzy. Give him a little Maybe make his mouth open here. A little bit of teeth. Get this foot back here so he's stable and okay so that's kind of the where I'd start off with kind of just get that that basic idea down um, and then I would go with some tracing paper and I would refine that okay so I've got instead of having to redraw and erase and, and things like that what I can do is I can take this piece of tracing paper and you can get some at Walmart if you don't have any. Um, I can see that I want to put a tail here, but um, there's not really not room for it. And I got a little bit more room here. So what I can do is I can kind of recenter um, my paper. You can see I can just push my tracing paper over here so I have a little bit more room over on this side. So 
jack this up a little bit more. So now I'm going to refine my drawing. This is very much like uh, we did our cartoon um, in another class. I don't know if you were in that. But we can do some refining. And trace over and keep things that we like. Make some adjustments of the things that we don't like. Okay, so I could maybe bring this up a little bit more. Make this mouth a little bit bigger. Maybe put a little fur down here. I can refine these eyes. Like a, a anime style eyes, the big pupils, put a little bit of fur around here. A little tuff of hair on top. And so I just continue on here until I had something I liked. Now, I, if I if I did this, then I can also put another piece of paper, piece of tracing paper over, and trace on here, or I can experiment a little bit. Let's see if I want to try um, you know something else like claws or something. I might just go ahead and draw without claws like this time and I can come back in later. I like this. Um, but anyway, I'm going to kind of cut away here because I've already kind of got that and refined that. So I've got one here now that that I got his hand up. You probably can't see it very well. Um, piece of paper. I really kind of like the other one that uh, had a little bit more um, like freedom here, but but now this one has got his tail kind of wrapped around this tree, and I put a little bit of vegetation around it. So let's say that that's all done. That's what I want. So now, how do I transfer that to a um, better illustration board? What I have here is I have a, a nine or a ten by fifteen piece of uh, cold press illustration board. It's made by Crescent, but you can get it um, Hobby Lobby. It might be Dick Blick or some other some other uh, company. And let me get up a little bit even higher. So this is this has a little bit of thickness to it and get it underneath here. Um, it's basically good drawing board, drawing paper. Um, it's kind of sandwiched on a piece of cardboard that makes it a little bit more stable. So how do we transfer this over to here? Well, this is what I like to do. I kind of make my own transfer paper as I scribble on the back over the lines where I have drawn. Let's see. There. So I'm scribbling on the back. And you usually want to do this with a, a soft pencil. It does take a little bit of time. And you don't want your illustration board underneath right now because the whole essence of this is I'm pushing the graphite off. onto the paper in a minute. Here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut away here and I'll be back. So I'm just scribbling over top of my whole drawing. I could do it over the whole paper. It just gets a lot messier and we don't really want to do that. So I'm going to go over this all and then I'll be back when I'm done with that. 
Okay, you can see that I've scribbled on the back. It didn't have to be real neat, but I just def definitely need the color over top of where the lines were. So here's my original drawing. I've got all that scribbling on the back side. Maybe a little bit more. Be good over here. Now, so I've got all this graphite, and it doesn't stick to the tracing paper very well. So that's what we're hoping for. So now what I want to do is I want to get my illustration board, and I want to center this. So even if it's not centered on the tracing paper, I want to center it again. And I'll get it where I want it. Could even piece, put a piece of tape down, especially if I'm not going to be able to do it all at one time. I think I'm going to be okay now. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace back over top of this drawing. Go right over top of my original drawing. What I'm doing is I'm putting, pushing that graphite that was on the back side down onto the paper. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. Now it is going to be a little bit lighter, so you may have to come back in and uh, redraw a little bit. But the nice thing about this is there used to be some it's called carbon paper, and the paper would do the same kind of thing, but it was waxy, and you could never erase it. So here, um, it's much easier because all it is is graphite. And if you're not pleased with it, you can erase it as easily as you can any other pencil. Now, already not super pleased with part of this. So, I, I still have the ability to redraw some things that I didn't like. But I'm going to come back in a minute and I'll show you what it looks like. First of all, I'll show you what, what I'm doing. You can see it's, it's coming in really light. You're probably not going to be able to see it. I can see it. Um, but it's coming in really light, which is actually what we want anyway. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, I've got it all traced now. I'll pull this paper up. And the design is there, but it's going to be really difficult for you to see here. So now I'm going to want to redraw a little bit of that where I'm having a hard time seeing. So. I'm going to do that and I'll be back in a minute after I get this all kind of redrawn and I'll show you the next step then Okay, so uh, we're going to pick back up here. I had uh, got my drawing transferred from the tracing paper and then I went back over top and, and darkened up my lines. And now what I'm going to do is, uh, this is on the illustration board again, I'm going to do a wet the, wet the uh, paper a little bit so that it's going to blend. And I'm going to just lay in some basic shapes right at the moment. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and this leaf and I'm just going to get this just a general tone over everything. So I want to wet it first because um, I want to get that to blend. And so I'm not even differentiating between leaves here because I'm just going to make that all the same color to begin with and then I'll, I'll add some other darker stuff in a little bit. 
it will stop at this one here so that I keep everything wet. Okay, before get, that has a chance to dry, I might want to come back and add a little bit more water because it doesn't hold the water like uh, like watercolor paper does. So take a little bit of and the phthalo blue and a little lemon yellow get just a nice leaf green and so I'll do that over everything here and we'll catch back with, up with you in a minute but uh, remember the more I hold the brush up and down the, the more uh, detailed I can get that line that thinner line so I'm gonna do a lot more with this I just want to get a basic value down and I want to do it light enough that I can go darker if I want to. But notice that that, by wetting the paper first, I'm really eliminating those brush strokes so I get nice smooth lines. It's getting a little bit dry right in here. But just by putting that water on it just kind of blends itself out. Okay, so it is, it's pretty light at the moment, um, but uh, I'm gonna go back and uh, do some more here and then we'll pick back up in a minute. But that's, that's what I would do, is get some light values down so that I can come back and darken them up later on.
Okay, so as I'm putting these uh, these val light values in, I'm leaving this white um, on the edges because I have to preserve those whites um, because it won't. Uh, I can't come back and paint white like I can in acrylic or oils. So um, I have to be careful there. I'm uh, pretty wet. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be looking for those white highlights. Um, this side pretty, pretty much is not going to have any white highlights here. It's getting kind of wet there, so maybe I can spread that out. I work quickly. Sometimes you can get it by without wetting the paper, but um, most of the time it's going to leave a little bit streaky if you don't like right there so I probably should have gotten a little white or a little water on it and I know this is so light now that the camera's not picking it up super well It'll get darker in a minute. I want to make sure, though, that everything's getting that main basic value. So I'm going to leave a little bit of white here. I think the pads of this is going to be a different color. I haven't really totally decided yet. But. I'm going to leave that little bit of white edge along the left hand side of the fingers, paw, or whatever it is. But the right hand side is going to be darker. All right, so that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that white, and right now it looks pretty messy and kind of splotchy right here. Got a little splotchier than I would like because I really didn't get that uh, wet enough to begin with. But that's all going to change in a little bit. Okay, so we've got the um, basic paintings. Um, just toned and then we're going to go in and, and put some other details in. So I think uh, I'm going to use some cadmium yellow and that'll be just a kind of warmer yellow and that's actually a lot of green in it right now so I need to probably clean it out. That much green. this kind of warm yellow and I'm just going to tone maybe the again the edge of this leaf like this where the sun is, might be hitting it so I'm just going to kind of make that up but now my paper is dry and so I'm going to it's going to look a little more um, streaky if I'm not careful but now I'm going to just be putting some uh, some just patches in anyway so and just kind of making up where it might hit do that or all the way around maybe bring this up a little bit warmer Also do this with a little bit with the uh, color pencils. Just kind of assuming that maybe this right side is getting a little bit more light than the other side. Okay. Now, so I'm gonna kind of do that a little bit more here with uh, put some value on the, the body now 
and I'm going to introduce a little bit of blue in here so it's a little more purplish. So Lizard and Crimson and Ultramarine Blue. And let's start inside the ear here. I may get darker than this later, but so leave a little bit of texture. I know the reflection is kind of hard for you to see. I'm doing the opposite of what my white um, highlight was. Wherever there's a highlight, there's going to be a shadow. The only way you're going to get a highlight is you got a light source. Now, as it comes around here, they're not going to get it's much light. So some of these are going to be pretty dark. So it's nice to have that base color. You can just build on that. leave a little bit of that base color so I've got a highlight here I got some base color so I'm going to completely cover that up with my shadow giving a little bit more of a 3d effect so I'm thinking about just what would a cylinder look like So we're just adding a little more contrast as we go along here. Now the final details can be done with colored pencil. Get a little bit of purple. So I always got to be thinking, where's the shadow going to be? cast by this little rounded thing here. red. This is why we need to be able to see our sketch, but the sketch doesn't have to be really dark. We'll come back in and redefine.
about a sphere as to what a perk's gonna have a shadow and what not. That's the kind of hard thing on fantasy stuff is that you're going to make up a lot because you don't have as much reference. This is going to be darker under here because it's deeper shadows, so I can put that. You notice I haven't really mixed any colors too much because I want to keep that one color pretty much the same. But now I can add a little bit of texture if it's got fur. Still primarily that same color, but I can kind of break up my brush strokes a little bit to get a little bit of that texture. That's going to be a little darker in there. So. Just like I would be drawing, I can add those brush strokes and get some texture. I'm hardly using any paint at all. A little bit of that 3D effect. And this kind of fat here off of this hind quarter is gonna create a shadow right in here. As I come up, I'll probably deepen that shadow a little bit. So that his hip will shine through here. And there's probably gonna be a little bit of shadow in here, so it's gonna be a little darker. So if this is darker shadow under here, then that's going to pop his head out. The head's going to be lighter color. And the kind of cool thing about watercolor is it's, you can just kind of keep layering it and it just keeps adding to that value. further apart and just give the indication of texture. It looks like maybe I'm doing just dots but I'm not I'm just kind of pulling in the direction of the fur might be. But I don't want to get too uh, Ordered so I have stripes. I don't want to do that unless I want stripes. Okay, I'm just going to kind of sneak up on this again. So it's getting darker in here. And just add some more. It's going to need to be darker even yet, but I'll come back to that in a little bit. Now I'm kind of adding dots just to give that texture. Okay, so I'm going to work on this a little bit and we'll come back. 
Okay, now that I've got the base colors down, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my micron pen and I'm gonna do some outlining and add some more detail. Um, this will kind of clean up some of the edges as well. And to give it a more of a like storybook kind of feel, I think. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm just gonna go over this, back over my pencil lines, and uh, we'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so now I've got a lot of it uh, outlined, um, but then I kind of decided that it didn't really feel like uh, it had a kind of a little punch. So I'm going over and thickening up all the outlines. And not every line, I'm just doing the contour. So the contour is just the outside of that shape. So instead of coming in here, I'm going on the outside and just giving that this character a little extra punch. I'm not going to do that with the leaves or anything else. See, I'm not going on the inside here, I'm just going on the outside, the contour. I did kind of do it right here a little bit to make his face pop out a little bit more. Um, not sure if I like that yet or not, but definitely on the contour out here. Not necessarily going in here. If I really feel like I need to, I can. But um, but I'm also going to add a few little texture lines in here as well. I'm not going to get too crazy with this. But my watercolor's already got that, so I can darken it up a little bit. Maybe add a little bit of shadow to this little tuft of hair. Just doing that on the right hand side. Make that kind of pop out off his face. Um, I could put a few little marks in here to, or I could come back in and darken it up with uh, with the color pencil or the, the watercolor. Still got um, I missed a little bit here, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, watercolor that. Um, a little reflection there in those toenails, um, and then uh, I'm gonna come in with colored pencil on that. So that's where we'll be next. I'm just gonna finish this up, get a little more texture in here. Around and make sure that I put that as bold as I want to. Maybe it needs to be a little bolder, but I think I'm gonna stick with that right at the moment. Okay, um, and I went off the screen again. I need to tape it down, so maybe a little put some veins in here. finish up this and then I'll show you what we're going to do with the color pencil. 
Okay, so the final part here is we're gonna do some colored pads and colored pencils. So I'm gonna take a little bit of uh, this warmer yellow and, and I can add, just add some things that's a little more controlled than, uh, than our watercolor. Um, so I can, if I wanna enhance this, this warmth of the leaves here. I want to probably make sure that this is, uh, you know, the watercolor is dry, and mine definitely is at this point. Um, now, unless you have some watercolor pencils, and then you can draw and then take um, watercolor or just water and wet them, and then they blend kind of like watercolor. So, I want to try that out. This is just going to enhance that color because my watercolor seems to be a little bit on the dull side. So it's a little more opaque as they are transpar transparent watercolors. So this kind of covers up a little bit of the, a little bit of that. So we can uh, bounce around here and you can do this as little or as much as you want. I'm going to introduce a little bit of pink maybe to this. And I'm going to leave a little bit of a white outline here. And this is going to take a little bit of time here because I'm going to cover up this. And I, I'm not real happy with the texture, so I want to get rid of some of the texture of that the watercolor cave. So I'll smooth that out a little bit. And this is going to add a little more pink to it. Okay. So I'm going to keep on doing that. I'll be back. So what I did was I smoothed out a lot of this. I, I didn't like the texture that the watercolor gave me, so I came back in with some uh, that magenta color and then also some purple and some blue. Um, and I've got 
if you see on all these, I've got just a little bit of yellow that just makes it like there's light cascading down. It's kind of hard to see. Um, maybe I can zoom in. You can see a little bit more. Plus, the nice thing about that is this, those are complementary colors, yellow and purple. So they um, add some vibrance as well. So, um, you know, you, you can do a, uh, any kind of um, kind of proportion, whether it's mostly watercolor, mostly colored pencil, or a little bit of both. Um, but uh, just kind of have fun with it and see what you can come up with. All right.